Welcome learners, I am Divya Nath. Today we are going to discuss about module 3, lesson 7, presentation of data, part 2. In this module, we are going to discuss about pie chart and steps in construction of it. Then we are going to discuss about time series graph and steps in its construction. Thereafter, we are going to learn about and construction steps about histogram, frequency polygon and cumulative frequency curve. So let's start with the class and let's discuss about pi diagram. Pi diagram is an angular diagram popularly displays or shows percentage breakdown of data. So we can say that a pi diagram therefore is a circle subdivided into component sectors to present the proportion of different constituent parts to the total. Let's take a pie chart to understand. In this pie chart, pet ownership is shown. From the pie chart, it is very clear that mostly people wants to have dogs as their pets, then cats, then we are talking about fish, then rabbits and then rodents. So we can clearly see that here pie diagram is showing percentage breakdown of the data. After knowing this, we can discuss the steps in the construction of pi diagram. The following are the steps. The very first step, we need to find out percentage of total of all categories. For this, we need to know the value of each category first, then divided by the total values and then multiply by 100. In this way, we can get percentage of total of all categories. Once we have computed percentages, then the second step comes. Now from this percentage, we need to convert them into degree. So whatever the percentage we have computed, multiply by 360 degree and we will get degree of the angle formed by each category or component or group. The next step is draw a circle. Now once you draw the circle, you have to draw in such a way, neither it is too big, neither it is too small. Then after this, draw the radius. Now you have drawn the radius, you have taken an appropriate size of circle. After this, in the step 4, draw angles. Now while you are drawing the angles, draw it in clockwise with the help of a protector. So in the step 4, we have drawn the angles with the help of protector and it is in clockwise. In the next step, we are going to shade or color different segments so that we can easily identify them. Uh, in the next step, that is step 6, we are going to put percentage on the shaded areas. Hence, a neat, clean, interesting and very good pie diagram will be drawn. So these are the six steps which we should take while we are drawing a pie diagram. Let's check whether we have learned properly or not by taking an example. In this particular example, favorite type of movies have been discussed. Comedy, action, romance, drama and science fiction. As you can see different data is being given, we can easily print, uh, present all this data in a pie diagram. Now for this step 1, I need to calculate percentage of each segment. That means percentage for the comedy, percentage for the action, percentage for the romance, percentage for the drama and percentage for the science fiction movies. Now the step 1, we need to get the total of all these movies. How many movies are there in total? So if we compute, we get 20 movies. Now for step 1, for comedy, 4 by 20 into 100, we get 20 percentage. Likewise for action, 5 by 20 into 100, we get 25 percent. For romance, 6 by 20 into 100, we get how much percentage? 30 percentage. Likewise for drama and science. Now we will cross check the total percentage should come to 100. Once we have done the first step, I can now find the degree. 
for the degree whatever the percentage we have just computed in this step we have to multiply by 360 degree so for the first comedy 20 percent into 360 degree gives us 72 degree then comes 25 percent into 360 degree that gives you 90 degree then 30 percent into 360 degree we got 108 degree in the next 5% into 360 degree we get 18 degree and in the last 20% of 360 degree gives you 72 degree. Now students once you have drawn the degrees again go for a cross check all the degrees when be added should be 360 degree. So we now know that we have calculated data properly we have converted data into degrees. Now plot an appropriate size of circle then draw the radius start marking the angles with the help of protractors in the clockwise once you have drawn all the angles on the circle then in that case then shade the circle as you can see over here different colors have been used after this plot the percentage on it hence we can see very easy formation of pi diagram which shows colorfully all the percentage breakdown of the data. We can easily from this pi diagram observe that people like to watch which kind of a movie? Romance. After that what kind of a movie people like to watch? It's yes action movies. So students we have learned how to draw a pi diagram. Now we can discuss about time series graphs. Now what are time series graph? Time series graph are also known as line graph because they record the relationship between variables. Out of these variables, one of the variable is time. It could be in days, weeks, months or years. So time series graph is also known as a line graph which records the relationship between variables. After this, we are going to discuss different types of time series graphs. Now, as you can see, there are two types of time series graphs. One is one variable graphs, other is two or more than two variable graphs. Now, in one variable graphs, there are these are the graphs in which value of one variable are shown with respect to some time period. Whereas in case of two or more than two variable graphs, what happens? These are the graphs in which values of two or more than two variables are shown with respect to time period. Now students, once we know about these two graphs, we can discuss them with the help of construction. Now let's discuss one variable graph. In this question, you can see year is being given on the other hand production in million tons is being given to us now while you're drawing the, these graphs what points one should keep in their mind that is first label the diagram while you draw y axis while you draw y axis label them first because what happens either you forget it later on so first draw the y axis x axis label them properly give the heading as we have given over here production of coal in country x from 2009 to 14 in million tons now start plotting it for the year 2009 to 10 the data is 77.22 first point as you can say we have plotted on for the year a then for 2010 to 11 we have got the data 78.17 for the year we have just plotted point B then for 2011 to 12 the data is 88.42 now in this case we have plotted point C likewise for 2012 to 13 the data is 99.80 we have plotted the point D for the year in the last 2013 to 14 it's 103.50 that is point E once you have plotted the points A B C D E then join these points with the help of scale and in this way you will get 
one variable graph. Now I think you have all understood this one variable graph, we can discuss about two variable graph. So students let us discuss about two or more than two variable graphs. As you can see in this graph there are two variables, the first is import, the other is export. Now to distinguish between the two lines either you can use color pencils or you can have one dotted line with your pencil. Now let us see, as we can see on y axis we have plotted imports and exports, on x axis we have labeled year. The very first thing is that we have to label the diagram first, then we are going to draw it. First we are going to draw import for the years and then we are going to uh, draw export for the years. Let us start with the import, for 2009 to 10 the data is 15. Now first plotted for the year as you can see, likewise for 2010 to 11, 85, then for 2011 to 12, 90, 2012 to 13, 130, 2013 to 14, 170. As you can see in this diagram, the imports are being shown with the dotted line. So we have just joined all the points with the dotted. In the next case that is export, we have used the plain line. Now we are going to plot for the years 2009 to 10, 35, 2010 to 11, 100, 2011 to 12, 70, 2012 to 13, 120, 2013 to 14, 180. We have got the dots, now we are going to join all the dots to form the line graph. So we have drawn the graph, we have labeled it as exports and imports of country X in 2009 to 14 in rupees 100 crores. So always mention rupees or 100 crores whatever the digits or unit of measurement is given always mention in the diagram. So students we have learned one variable graph and more than one variable that is two variable or more than two variable graphs. After this we can discuss about histogram. Now what is a histogram? When we talk about histogram, a histogram is a graphical presentation of a frequency distribution. Now whenever we talk about histogram, it can be only drawn for frequency distribution first thing. The second thing is that it must be for a continuous series that means a series must be continuous. So we are saying that histograms can never be drawn for frequency arrays. First thing we have learned that frequency arrays, for frequency arrays we cannot draw a histogram. Next thing, whenever we are drawing the histogram, values of the variables are shown on x axis and their frequencies are shown on y axis. Now histograms are different from bar diagrams. We are, why we are discussing right now because in the earlier chapters we have also learned how to draw bar diagrams. Why what is the difference between histogram and a bar diagram? Histograms are two dimensional whereas bar diagrams are one dimensional. So up till now we have learned two main things. First histogram can be drawn for frequency distribution only that too for a continuous series. Next thing we now know that histogram is different from bar diagram as histogram is two dimensional and bar diagram is one dimensional. Now while we are constructing histogram, we can construct histogram of equal class intervals and we can also construct histogram of unequal class intervals. Now students once we know about histogram, we are going to draw histograms in the following two cases. Let us discuss the very first. When we talk about histogram in case of equal class intervals, what are the key points which one should keep in their mind? Very first, the data is at equal class interval, first thing. Now the length of the rectangles of the histogram will vary according to their frequencies, whereas when we talk about of the width of the bar, they are going to remain same and there won't be difference between them. So we have learned that the length of the rectangles would vary according to frequencies and when we talk about the width, width is going to remain same 
next thing there will be no distance between the bars or rectangles let's see with the help of an example now this is an example where we are going to construct histogram let's first analyze the data we can see from the following data that here it is of frequency distribution it is a continuous series continuous means upper limit is a next lower limit we are able to see that the class interval gap is also same so that's where the heading goes histogram of equal class intervals now let's see how we have drawn it we can see on the x axis we have given marks 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 on the y axis the frequencies have been noted down that is number of students for the first 0 to 10 the frequency is 2 we have made one bar for 10 to 20 the frequency is 5 we have made another bar for the 20 to 30 the frequency is 8 we have made another bar for 30 to 40 the frequency is 11 we have made another bar likewise we have made all the bars according to their frequencies now what we are observing over here we are observing that the length of the bars are changing according to frequencies on the other hand the width of the bar remains same the distance between the bars is not there so the th three points we have discussed we have learned how to draw histogram in case of equal class intervals now students we are going to discuss histogram in case of unequal class intervals let's analyze the data first as over here we can see the marks 10 to 15 15 to 20 20 to 25 25 to 30 the class interval gap is 5 but when we read the next class 30 to 40 40 to 60 60 to 80 the class interval gaps are changing for 1 30 to 40 it is 10 for 40 to 60 it is 20 for 60 to 80 it is 20 so i have identified that it is a situation of unequal class interval gap and look over here also upper limit is the next lower limit the, it is continuous so let's see the steps which we should take while we are drawing histogram in case of unequal class intervals since the last in class intervals are unequal frequencies must be adjusted so we are telling we are not going to adjust the marks that means classes are not going to be adjusted we are going to adjust only the frequencies and that too of only whom whose class intervals are not same take the class which has the lowest class interval now we are going to identify out of all these class which class has lowest class interval gap so that is 5 do not adjust the frequencies of the lowest class that means for the lowest class we are not going to adjust the frequencies they are going to remain the same that means we are going to plot them only now the next step frequencies of other classes are adjusted with their lowest class intervals that means for 30 to 40 40 to 60 60 to 80 their frequencies are going to be adjusted according to the lowest class intervals now the last main important point adjusted frequency will decide the heights of each rectangle that means when we are going to get the adjusted frequencies for 30 to 40 40 to 60 60 to 80 we are going to plot those adjusted frequencies only for their heights let's see how we have adjusted the frequencies first in this you can see the frequency of minimum class intervals on which the frequencies of other classes are adjusted will not be changed so we are again recalling the point that for those in which the class interval gaps were same we are not going to change the frequencies and we should label our diagram properly let's see how we have adjusted this was the question i am just changing it towards how we have made the adjustment in this slide we can see that adjustment have been made let's see for 10 to 15 15 to 20 20 to 25 25 to 30 the frequencies are not being adjusted because the class intervals are the lowest and they remains the same 
So, we are going to plot the heights of those rectangle as 6, 19, 28 and 15. But when we talk about 30 to 40, we need to adjust the frequency. How we are adjusting? Minimum class interval gap is 5 multiplied by the frequency of the class interval divided by the class interval gap. So, class interval gap is 10. So, 5 multiplied by 12 divided by 10 gives me the adjusted frequency as 6. Now, for the next class 40 to 60, what is the class interval gap? The class interval gap is 20. And what is the minimum class interval gap? It is 5. And what is the frequency? 12. So, 5 multiplied by 12 divided by the class interval gap that is 20 gives you the adjusted frequency 3. Likewise for 60 to 80. Minimum class interval gap 5. The particular class interval gap is 20. And the frequency is 8. 5 into 8 divided by 20 gives 2. Now we have adjusted the frequencies. So for the classes 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 to 25, 25 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80. We are going to plot the adjusted frequencies. Now here main important point is this, here the width of the rectangles are going to change for 30 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80. Let us see how we have drawn the histogram. In this histogram what we are looking that for certain classes the width of the rectangles are changing for whom we have adjusted the frequency. For others whose frequencies are not adjusted their width remains same that is 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 to 25, 25 to 30. As the class interval gap is same we have not adjusted the frequency so the width remains same. But on the other hand for those we have adjusted the frequencies the width changes 30 to 46, 40 to 63 and 60 to 82. We have labeled our diagram properly on x axis we have got marks on y axis we have got number of students and this is how we construct histogram in case of unequal class interval series. So students we have learned how to draw histogram in case of equal class intervals as well as in case of unequal class intervals. Now let us discuss about polygon. What is a polygon? Polygon is another form of diagrammatic presentation of data and is formed by joining midpoints of the tops of all rectangles in a histogram. This means we have to first construct a histogram, right? So once we construct a histogram, then we have to point out the midpoint on each on the top of the rectangles. Then join those points, midpoints. So we are saying a frequency polygon is formed by joining the midpoints of the tops of the bars in a bar chart by straight line. That means we are not using the curve, we are joining it by straight line. Let us see the construction steps to construct frequency polygon. Now for frequency polygon, first we need to draw histogram. So when we have to draw the histogram, we have to keep in view all the basic principles which were required to draw histogram. Once we have drawn the histogram, the second step is get the midpoints of the upper horizontal side of each rectangle. Now we have midpoints. Now once we have identified the midpoints, then join these midpoints of the adjacent rectangles of the histogram by straight lines. So with the help of a scale, we can join these points. Now once we have drawn, we have to see that both the axes are clearly labeled. So these were the steps to draw a frequency polygon. Let us take an example to understand it better. So this is a particular question which tells us prepare histogram and frequency polygon from the following data. Now the first step we now know that a histogram can be constructed in case of equal class interval 
as well as in case of unequal class interval. So, we will first see what category it is. So, we can see the data have same equal class interval cap that is of 10. So, it is a case of histogram in case of equal class interval. We can easily plot, we do not have to adjust the frequencies. Once we have drawn the histogram, then what we are going to do? We are going to find the midpoints on the top of each rectangle. Let us see how we have done. We can see over here, we have drawn the histogram, we have labeled it, the x axis have been labeled as marks on y axis number of students. Then what we have done? We have drawn the histogram first. So, while we have drawn the histogram, we have followed the all rules which we have learned. Then we have find out the midpoint on each of the top of the rectangle. One is 5 for 8, for 15, for 11, for 6, for 4. Now, how to start and how to end? To start, we need a point on x axis on the both the sides. So, on both sides of the histogram, we have to find out the midpoint of the next classes or the previous classes. Then we are going to start from this midpoint and join all the points with the help of a scale. We can easily see we have drawn the frequency polygon. This is how we draw a frequency polygon with the help of a histogram. Now students, we have learned all the steps. We can discuss about cumulative graphs. Now when we talk about cumulative graphs or cumulative frequency curve, they are often known as ogives. Now when we talk about ogives, it is the curve which is constructed by plotting cumulative frequency data on the graph paper in the form of smooth curve. Students note the point. Frequency polygon, we have used the scale or ruler. Over here, we are going to join as smooth handed. So, we are not going to construct straight lines in case of ogives, right? So, ogive can be constructed in two ways. One is less than method, other is more than method. We have learned in the previous chapter how to construct cumulative frequency data. Now, in case of less than method, Beginning from upper limit of the class interval, we go on adding the frequencies corresponding to every next upper limit of the series. For less than, we are using upper limits and cumulatively we are going to add all the frequencies. In this way, we can construct less than cumulative frequency data. For more than method, in this method, we take cumulative total of the frequencies beginning with lower limit of the first class interval. Frequencies are added starting from the lower limit of the first class interval. So, in case of more than we are going to use lower limit. Let us take an example to understand it. Here the marks have been given and the number of students have been given. So, we are going to construct this exclusive series into less than cumulative series and more than cumulative series. Let us see how we have done. Now, the methods are when we go for less than or more than, first step is we have to calculate cumulative frequencies. Then what we are going to do? We are going to take marks variable under study on x axis. Now, on y axis what we are going to take? We are going to take cumulative frequencies on y axis. Then plot the various points and join them to get the curve. So, for less than plot the less than data, for more than plot the data for more than and you will get curves. Both the axes should be labeled clearly. So, these are the steps let us discuss with the help of this example. So, we have converted the exclusive series into cumulative series. One is less than cumulative series, other is more than cumulative series less than 5, we have used upper limit, less than 5, less than 10, less than 15, less than 20, less than 25, less than 30, less than 35, less than 40. Now, what we have done? We have added the frequencies 4, 4 plus 6, 10, 10 plus 10, 20, 20 plus 10, 30, 30 plus 25, 55, 
55 plus 22 that goes to 77, 77 plus 18, 95, 95 plus 5, 100. So, in this way we have constructed less than cumulative series. Then only we can draw less than cumulative curve. Now, for more than we have used lower limit, more than 0, all the students 100, more than 5, subtract those who have got 0 to 5 that is 4, 100 minus 4 that is 96, more than 10, 96 minus 6, 90, more than 15, 90 minus 10, 80, more than 20, 80 minus 10, 70, more than 25, 70 minus 25 that comes to 45, more than 30, 45 minus 22 is equals to 23, more than 35, 23 minus 18 is equals to 5 and definitely for more than 40 it would be 0. This is how we have constructed more than cumulative series. So, once we have got the data, we have constructed the cumulative series, we can easily plot them. So, once we are plotting less than cumulative series, we will get less than curve, less than frequency curve cumulative. Once we are plotting more than type of data, we will get more than cumulative frequency curve. Let us see how we have drawn it. Now, in this particular graph, you are able to see that we have written marks on x axis. On y axis, we have written number of students. Mind it, here number of students is cumulative. Right? So, one thing in the same diagram we have drawn less than cumulative curve and more than cumulative curve. Less than starts from 4, then comes for 10, then for 20, for 30, 55, 77, 95 and 100. We have plotted the point with respect to marks that is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 and 40. For these marks we have plotted less than cumulative frequency curve by joining it with free hand. Smoothly we have joined all those points. Now we are going to join it from origin. So smoothly we have joined the curve all the points and we got smooth curve. So we have drawn the less than cumulative frequency curve. On the other hand when we talk about more than frequency curve we started from 100 because more than 0, we got 100. So, 100, 96, 90, 80, 70, 45, 23, 5 and 0 with respect to marks that is 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 and 0. So, in this way, once we have got the points, we are going to join it again with the smooth hand and we will get a smooth curve. So, we have drawn more than frequency, cumulative frequency curve. So, students, we have learned how to draw less than cumulative frequency curve as well as more than cumulative frequency curve. If it is being asked to draw only less than cumulative frequency curve, you can also write less than marks. If it is being asked only to draw more than frequency cumulative curve, then you are going to write more than marks. So, students, I, I think you have understood how to draw the ogives. Let us have a quick recap what we have learned in the class. We have discussed about pi diagram and we now know that in pi diagram, we can uh, always present the percentage distribution of the data. We have learned about time series graph. In time series graph, what we can do? An economic variable is presented along with time. Then we have discussed histogram. We now know that histogram can be constructed only for frequency distribution of a continuous series. And it can be constructed in case of two cases that is equal class interval and unequal class interval. After this, we have discussed about polygon and we now know Polygon is another form of diagrammatic presentation which is constructed with the help of histogram and how it is being constructed by joining the midpoints of the tops of all rectangles. In the last, we have also discussed about ogive known as 
cumulative frequency curve. We have discussed that these cumulative frequency curve can be constructed in the form of less than method or more than method. So students, I hope you have learned the lesson well, you know the concept now and thank you.